Today, let's talk about how heavy or light swords were. Hello, I'm Jonathan, also known as the PC Genie, and of course we're going to be looking at different examples of how heavy or light actual swords were. Now, I mean, I could use my collection of recreation swords and, you know, those sorts of things, but it would seem unfair considering the fact that, of course, it's the modern period, they'll be made in different ways, and I can ask someone to make a sword for me that would be as heavy or light or big or small or whatever as I like, and it would be irrelevant to how actual historical swords were. So all of the examples I've got today are from museums and actual swords from the time periods that I'm talking about. So, let's get to it, shall we? So the first example that I'd found, bearing in mind these are all coming from the British Museums, was an Anglo-Saxon period sword. It's from around sort of the 900s, so 10th century, and it was weighing at 1,214 grams, and that's about 2.7 pounds, about two and a half pounds, so, so, as far as we're concerned, it is a bit heavier than you might expect on certain blades and other weapons or tools and things, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to be something that functions properly as a proper battering club or mace or something, because the weight is distributed across its whole length. It's not the 2.7 pounds at the head that's across the entire sword, pommel for counterbalancing included. So that is evidence to show that actually swords are not just there as these maces and things or, you know, steel bars to smack people because if you spread that sort of weight across a blade you're not going to achieve that sort of blunt force impact unless it's all in one head. So that is again already some evidence for the fact that swords were actually supposed to be lighter cutting weapons. But I'd say it's interesting to note that those earlier swords like your sort of Viking or Dark Age or sort of early medieval swords were a bit heavier so they were more towards the stereotype of being heavy smashing objects even if not as extreme as people tend to portray them. The second example I found was going all the way back to the Bronze Age so they, they couldn't really get an exact date or idea of precisely when it came from just roughly somewhere in the Bronze Age this bronze sword came from, but it is a real historical sword, so it's fine. And this one weighs 368 grams, which is about, well it says, I've got it uh, translated to 0.8 pounds, so an item that weighs less than a pound, I mean I've seen many sort of hatchets and objects which are, of course, again, head heavy, and they usually weigh about one to one and a half pounds. Or maybe if you had a larger sword, you might get something like a couple of pounds, up to maybe about three pounds in weight. And yet this is not even one pound in weight. So if you wanted to get some smashing and smacking action done, it's not going to work. So that again shows that swords were there to be light, cutting and thrusting weapons, and are not there to just be, you know, blunt force trauma weapons. This sort of thing, again, especially divided over its entire length, would still be pretty much useless as a blunt force object and would have to have a sharp edge in order to do damage properly. For our third example we have got a sword from the mid sort of 1600s and it's a sort of a side sword I'd call it. I mean the exact terminology is up for debate but it is a real sword from around the mid 1600s and it weighs 705 grams which is about 1.6 pounds so you know being about one and a half pounds it's a reasonable sort of sword weight now yes we can bear in mind the fact that these swords will have corroded and rusted a bit so they will lose weight but i'd say if there was any significant weight lost it would get to the point where they're just going to disintegrate whereas this is obviously as you can tell from the picture it's clearly intact still even now in the modern period so it's it's not going to have lost a lot of weight it might lose a bit but not a huge amount so it still counts that at about one and a half pounds this is the sort of sword that is going to have more heft and is going to have a bit more of a chopping action in it 
but again is going to need to rely on a sharp, lethal edge to do its damage properly, to do its binding, its thrusts, its cuts and reposts all around, like you should expect from a lightweight sword. Our fourth and I'll say final example for today is a sort of a Scottish, you could call it a claymore or I'll call it a backsword again, terminology aside. It was from around the 1700s, it doesn't give an exact date again, but uh, it weighs 1160 grams and that is 2.7 pounds. So it is a lot more of a hefty weight, weighing nearly 3 pounds, but I mean, bearing in mind the fact that it's got a, pr a full basket hilt, so that would be about 180 degrees of coverage. It's going to be a chunky steel cage covering the whole hand all the way around. Like I say, 180 degrees in that sort of half sphere. It's going to have a lot of weight towards the hilt rather than towards the blade. It's going to be more back-weighted. And that, I think, is a significant factor there. And in terms of things like the blade, I mean, of course, this is more guesswork because they haven't got a point of balance listed on these statistics, just a, a general overall weight. It still shows that it's not going to be an extremely heavy weapon. It's not going to be something that smashes very effectively, except if you're using that basket hilt to go around and punch someone or do a pommel strike or something like that. In your standard sort of cut and thrust action, you'd be expecting it to be relying on the sharp point and the deadly edge. So I think from these sorts of examples, I mean, I had a look at quite a few actually, and they all go around the same sort of lines. They weigh from about, you know, half a pound up to three pounds, I find. And that shows that these swords, they have quite a bit of variance in weight, and some of them are heavier and heftier than others, especially bearing in mind that I find that the... Uh, sort of when there actually are statistics about the point of balance, your sort of earlier, say, Saxon-style swords tend to be more forward-weighted, so they've got more of that chopping action, whereas your later swords or certain things like rapiers are a lot more back-weighted towards the hilt, so that's a significant factor as well, you know, alongside the fact that you've got the weight. So something that could be heavier, like a rapier, may well still actually be more sort of lightweight and manoeuvrable because of the back weighting than say something that's only about a pound in weight. So there are those factors as well. But overall, I can quite explicitly and definitively say that swords from history, not recreations or things that we're making for ourselves to suit our biases, but real swords from history were not designed to be smashing and blunt force trauma weapons like some foolish historians will tell you. These real life examples demonstrate that swords are there for sharp edges and cutting action as well as keen points for thrusting. So if you need to get through armour, you need to do something like have something that can cut through the armour in a sharp fashion, such as padded armour being sliced open or thrusted through, uh, mail rings being split open by the point of a blade, or even things like stabbing and cutting around the gaps, such as someone wearing a helmet and breastplate being cut around the neck, or someone getting half-swording and a thrust under, say, the armpits, or areas like that. And it shows that swords are there to be sharp weapons and not as blunt instruments. I cannot say it enough, it needs to be debunked. And hopefully, I've done that today. So, uh, yeah, that's that about real swords, and if you want to see some of my recreation swords and what I think of them and their weighting and whatnot, I'll have some links in the description and also in the sort of end screen just coming after this. And I hope you enjoyed it today. See you later, guys, and have a good day.